Everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Hi. And Yami, Yami of course, is there. If you have any Beth. questions uh, around uh, ESNs in the background, Yami's there to field those. So, yes. yes. Well, Leslie, for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Okay, so I'm Leslie Crook. Um, I am in Brighton in the UK. Um, I'm kind of like 10 minutes from the sea down on the south coast. And um, I have, um, I'm six years MVP. Um, not as nice as your way you've displayed them on your wall there. Mine's just blue tacked without the shiny over the front, but that's the best <laughs> way I could, I could do it on my wardrobe um, doors. So, um, yeah, so I'm... Um, bit unusual in the MVP program because my background is actually corporate communications, but mm. that seems to be coming to the forefront now because now it's wonderful that the communications uh, uh, professionals have now got Viva Connections and Viva Engage and uh, the communicator, um, the, the company communicator in Teams as well. Um, so there are a lot of lovely applications of features there which are purely designed for um for the getting the word out and engaging the employees but when i used to work in comms it was really really difficult to get to the frontline workers um on the um i had worked for a company where we had a lot of factories so it was getting down to the production lines so it it was very very difficult but um but yeah the tools there are at their fingertips now so yeah well there, you know there's always been uh, so so somebody who like like i always felt out of place although i've been in tech for over 30 years but i have marketing degrees you know that's that's my as a chief evangelist and chief uh, uh you know marketing officer for different isvs and and even now I'm more in a partner channel role, but still very involved in, in the community. And so I fit very much within the end user in the marketing yeah. and communication side of things. But even going back when I started getting involved in the SharePoint community, there were a lot of people like us that were, uh, you know, more technical business users, um, but that were really trying to leverage the platform that from a, you know, holistic and global scope. Um, rather than, you know, admins building or users building solutions for their own teams was always thinking about how do we share this information? What is the one version of the truth? What, how do we get people to engage more? And when adoption and engagement started in the last four or five years, especially, and I know that there were others that we're talking about before that, but it's really just the last few years, more people like us have been coming to the forefront and saying, yeah, yeah we're, we don't have to worry about keeping servers up and running. Like it's, it, we're confident in the, in the platform running now and we can focus on what are we really trying to do with the technology and by having more people involved and if they get that information and if it's there in real time and they're collaborating together that we're going to be able to accomplish more, we're going to innovate more. And so, yeah, I think it's, it definitely has changed the discussion. Uh, and then certainly with Microsoft Viva introduction, that changes things even more. Yeah, it's funny. There was two things you said there that just uh, sparked um, th th things from the past when I was, because uh, I used to work at GlaxoSmithKline GSK. Mm -hmm. I was there for a long time. And um, when Yammer came, started to come uh, surface and I was the, um, the, uh, the, the comms business partner to the IT guys that were uh, running the network, the, um, it was interesting you said about the servers when they used to go down. It was always the people that were on Yammer that knew about the fix and knew what to do before anyone else. Um, it was kind of like there was a hashtag that they were using called Yammer Solved. And it was it used to be the people that used to know more about what was going on in the company were the smokers. Hmm. Because they used right. to meet outside the back Sit of the building, the stuff, right. but then suddenly it was those that were using Yammer were suddenly in the know, and it was all this Yammer solved that was going on. So and, are you uh, saying yeah. that Yammer uh, adopters are the new, the neo smokers of the modern workplace? Yeah, it's because it was called like the water cooler. Yeah, you know, it started to be called the water cooler because so you know, those were they used to go off and get a coffee, and then they used to all go and meet outside the building, and it was like a mix 
mixture of facilities management people, senior leaders, you know, it was support function staff. And they all think to, used to think they knew more about what was going on in the company, and they did. But then that started to shift. And then obviously going out and having a smoke was kind of started to be frowned upon and but some of them were going like six times a day so yeah. and it was like seemed to be absolutely fine that they were spending six times a day marching off to go and stand outside the building but the other i'll just leave that thought there but the other one that um that that has very been very important to me as, as an mvp is um the movement of and the philosophy of working out loud that was that was kicked off by John Stepper and Bryce Williams. Um, and Bryce uh, works at um, Pfizer. Is it, did I say that wrong? Is it Pfizer in in, in no? Sorry, Lily in um, uh, Indianapolis. I need to remember that because my, my sister lives in Indy. Um, so um, yeah, and those two got together, as I understand it, at a workshop. It must have been about. I don't know, eight or nine years ago, and they sparked off John Stepper being working for Deutsche Bank in New York, um, who's uh, now gone out and written the book, Working Out Loud, and him and Bryce came together. I think it was Bryce that came up with the phrase, work out loud, working out loud, and then John took it to another level with the, the working out loud circle. So for those that don't know about working out loud, the way I describe it in the broader term of um, enterprise social networking, it's very simple. It's sharing your work with a view. Others might find it helpful and others might help you improve your work. So it's like a reciprocal circle. In his book, John talks about working out loud circles and that's um, uh, the cross pollination of people coming together um, and sharing their networks, sharing their knowledge, um, guiding each other along and supporting each other on um, their different goals. Mm -hmm. But they're not they're not actually working on a project together. So a number of of these um, circles have taken place in a lot of companies in Germany um, because of uh, the Deutsche Bank starting mm -hmm. it from there. Um, but I took the idea of it and and brought that into enterprise social net networks. And I um, got the blessing from John Stepper to do that. Um, and he just said to me, you know, anyone that can spread the idea of this, you know, feel free to, 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 to share the love of working out loud. Um, so that's what started me on the road to the MVP program with Yama and talking about um, working out loud. And Ragnar Heel um, in, in Germany is also mm -hmm. a big, big supporter of working out loud. So Yeah, I know Ragnar well as well. But yeah, the, you know, it's interesting you know, it, where where you have some people that are very negative on Yammer, and yet uh, you know my like my history of presenting within the space, like the the first European SharePoint conference, which was held in Berlin, it's the only one that's been in Germany, so the first one. I did a session comparing social features, and this was before Microsoft acquired Yammer. And so I and I did a kind of analysis of ESNs and things that could integrate and didn't integrate was just talking about what SharePoint needs and why. And the room was packed. I ended up, I was either the first or second highest rated session of the entire wow. event. And so very excited about that, but you know, great interaction and people. So these are all SharePoint people along the admin side. And so sitting and talking about, I'm very much, uh, uh, you're talking about the why. It's not just how you go and do deploy technologies. Like, look, there's a lot of great content and people that do walkthroughs of deploying. That's great. I talk about the business case, the scenarios, the yeah. why you yeah. need that. And I did that with social, making the case for that. I just blogged on this, was talking about Viva Engage. And one of the things I love about Viva Engage is, again, it's breaking down the integrations uh, you know, and it was already using the Yammer Communities app. And so we've got that switch that happened within our organization. But with broader use of and acceptance of Engage and Yammer through the Engage app, um, it, it what it does is it helps surface information, surface uh, a knowledge and expertise that might otherwise not be attached. And, and Leslie, I, I know that you completely understand this scenario, but like I shared a, a just very quick story. When I started at Microsoft, I started in a team with a very specific role and job description. I went into the social tools. This was, again, this was back in 2006, the beginning of 2006. And they had built some rudimentary social capabilities in for the profile. So I went and added 
all of the projects I had been working on for 15 years, all this other experience, industry experience and gas and oil exploration yeah. and a bunch of other fields that were unrelated to my job. And I didn't think anything of it. The servers got updated within 24 hours. Two days later, I get a phone call but from two gentlemen over in a team in the oil and gas and the sales team. And they're like, we have been wow. desperately trying yeah. to find somebody that knows SharePoint yep. and knows this segment. So I ended up doing demos and for them and I did some introductions. So here I was able to yeah. go and help, you know, because then they found yeah. me through that connection, which if I were in teams today working on my projects, no one would have any idea, right? It's just, it's yet another silo. Yeah, and that's where we go back to the, the, the really wonderful model of the inner and outer loop because that that was the um for the yammer community when teams came in when we saw that shared ignite when was that 2017 or something when right. that popped yeah, up yeah i think so i think yeah. it was around that time and we all just went that explains it all whoever right. we we could never work out who drew up that original model i don't know if it was satya nadella himself um, but it's such know. a good model and it still works today but it does need probably an update with viva somewhere on it but it's i still... keep saying somebody microsoft if yeah. you're listening somebody needs to go refresh that yeah too. well leslie maybe we need to refresh it and then yeah you know, we'll get it wouldn't the take a that. lot it wouldn't take a lot but yeah it's there that teams is where you get your work done and you know everyone and then yammer is you know across the enterprise it's serendipity which is one of my favorite words yeah. um and that you know it's it's that's the working out loud part but i love now how um on teams when you look at your profile it's now got there the linkedin icon yep. and you can now bring the outside in from that angle as well uh, if you've so you can only do that with yeah internally with colleagues that you've that well with colleagues obviously that you're working with but i found it the other day when i tested it out for the first time someone that has worked with us at cloudway and has now left i could still bring him in yeah um, because we've already had that conversation or something. So it's, so you can still, yeah, it was like he was still sort of there. Um, but I really like the idea of that. And I think I've read, I don't know if you wrote about this or I've, another MVP wrote about this, um, this feature, but it is so useful to get, to find out, especially someone that's new coming into the company that you can just, you know, you're in teams, you see their profile come up for the first time or see them chat for the first time. And you can go, like, Oh, just click on that icon linkedin and there you go within yeah. teams it's all there just like you have now with yammer that integration it pops up there in teams everyone's saying what is the difference between viva engage and yammer it is just really at the moment it's just the integration right that's it yeah. until we get storylines and stories that's all it is it's the integration into teams now when someone message app, mess, app mentions you you get the pop-up in your activities in teams and it's all blended and well, you've you got know, that yeah it's it, that's you it know, something that's missing, why why i'm waiting for like that capability you know there was some criticism when the announcement of viva engage like uh, microsoft is just trying chasing after facebook and facebook workspace and there's some truth to that it, you know from a competitive standpoint it's like but I mean, that it's not like those ideas are, you know, a, a Facebook idea. They existed outside of that. And Facebook just was the most successful the most quickly. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was a member of a platform that, that was years earlier than Facebook was created called Rise, R-Y-Z-E. Still out there. It's barely a shell. It's, you know, yeah. Adrian Scott. Oh, there's Scott, loads of you know, them. There's, right, there's, there's, there's so of many of them. Yeah, there's so many of them. When I was at GSK, they had about, I had about 20 which I didn't quite realize. And then they had to, the IT guys had to decommission them, mm. you know, and break them off. R&D had the biggest, most popular one, but they were paying an extra subscription for that, that had been built particularly for, you know, the labs and, um, you know, for research and development, but they had to close it down to get everyone onto that one platform. But they had about um, 20 different um, enterprise social networks, but of course they were all siloed. So it was like, yeah. It was like using Teams well, in a way, so, or and Lotus that, Notes. <laughs> so talking about like even going in and click on the profile, and getting a LinkedIn, which I use all the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, at, but I, I'm I can't wait for the next step of that, the new features in, through Engage, where I can treat it like 
Facebook, where I I do uh, you know extensive blogging outside. It's my yes. personal stuff on my yes. weekends and that my you weeknights. You can go out, yeah. That yeah. I can post yeah. those things that yeah. might be related to other things that I'm reading and and events that I've gone and people that I've talked to and be able to post there. I, again, they're not tied to. They may not be relevant to the projects that I own or am a, a participating in, but. I have this other experience that I can put in there that I can yeah. tag, that I can make it part of the rich social fabric that kind of covers the organization and then spark other conversations. What are they That's calling what that feature? Do we know what that LinkedIn, I don't. LinkedIn linked out? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know, but yeah, the, the, I, I'm waiting for that too. Well, it's, yeah. I know in the time that we have, I, I do want to ask you like, what was your path to becoming an MVP? So you you're a six time MVP now kind of, how did you get there? What did you do? What was what was different? How did you stand out? It was from GSK. So um, I helped um, nurture the network there, um, and and it was also through the the Yammer customer network. So I got really involved in the YCN, and then I suddenly started having all these new professional connections outside of the company that we weren't talking about trade secrets, new drugs or anything like that. We were talking about better ways of working, modern ways of working, um, just like it had gone before, what, I don't know, 25, 30 years before with email and then file servers. And prior to that, you had fax machines and telex. We were talking about better ways of working and that's what we were excited about. So I also started to get invited by the Yammer customer success managers to go and um, help other companies um, in the pharma sector on their Yammer journey, or, you know, it wasn't always the pharma, pharma sector. Um, and then, so I, uh, my eyes were open to working out kind of like um, helping other companies. So it got to a point in GSK that we'd got to tipping point and my boss said to me, right, um, it's fine. You know, you don't need to keep on um, nurturing it. They've all got it. Yeah, it's fine. I, I want you to concentrate on these other things, which I was doing all these other things anyway. It wasn't yeah. kind of like my whole job. Right. And then I just thought, oh, I really don't want to be doing this stuff. you know, like, like just here, just in one company. I wanted to go and spread the, the love of, of enterprise social networking. So I left um, to help other companies. But um, actually, I had a really difficult time because I was too soon. A recruiter did say to me, you're about two years too soon. He goes, you've got a very niche, nice CV, but you're two years too soon. And I didn't get any work as a consultant. I was also a fledgling and I'd never worked as a consultant before. So I, I spent a lot of time having coffees with people who were sitting there with a big notebook, writing everything down that I was saying. I even got invited into Facebook Workplace in London um, to pick my brains. My big notebook says that yeah. I write, write yeah. everything so writing it all down. <laughs> and, and then they were like, oh, right, writing it all down. And then like, I never hear from them again. Yeah. Like, so, um, so that went on. Free, free, too, that's called too... free consulting, Leslie, what you yeah. did. I did the exact same yeah. thing where I just, I actually angrily I, it was interviewing for something for a massive project and heard from somebody inside the company later is like, Christian, they implemented your entire plan that you laid out in that, yeah, in your interview. They like, they exactly yeah. went through. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, I, but I, what I did in that time, it was, I can, I started to blog. Um, there were some great employee stories that came out of GSK right across the business, um, that we worked on before I left as part of a, um, a big celebration about reaching 50,000 within the company. Um, so we made some heroes and champions of, of people in the business and they all got loads of swag and um but i helped write up curate helped to curate those stories and bring those um those yammer champions those yam ambassadors to to the front of the um you know raise them up within the organization and it all happened as i remember rightly towards the end of the year when we were going through personal development reviews so they had great stories to share with their bosses and they all uh, we got stories on the on the homepage of the of the intranet um, under strategy company people um, or people strategy and these people were like from the offices around the world in the factories they were suddenly at on the company the, the, on the company intranet like you know you just wouldn't expect them um, those people to be there so um, I blogged on those stories outside the company um, and got pretty close 
um, built up good relationships with the Yammer customer success managers that had now, a lot of them had moved into Microsoft um, and um, was nominated by three of them because back then it was Microsoft that had to nominate you. So I got nominated by three of those lovely people um, and that's how I got onto the, um, onto the MVP programme and just continued with, um, you know, change, uh, helping people with change management, helping to build champion networks as we started to evolve into using Teams. Um, so, so the Yammer part has died away for me in the last couple of years because it's really been about helping um, uh, to with Teams adoption, running lots of training, um, Teams out, team owners and end users, all different shapes and sizes of training. Now running Viva workshops um, with my colleagues at Cloudway, um, the Accelerator workshops. Um, and yeah, I've got I've got my uh, little piece of rock here. So I think <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> right. So, um, so yeah, so, so that's, and it's lovely that I've come full circle and now we're back kind of like front and center with, yeah. with, with, with Viva Engage and um, all the goodness that, that, that that's bringing. But I'm really interested in the graph, the Microsoft graph that's, that brings all this together, but I can't hear anyone talking about the graph. I'm hearing lots of people talking about the kind of like the, 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 the new, you know, the integration and the new features that are coming, I, but well, I'm really interested in the graph and I don't you know, know really anything. Well, about you know, it. you, you have uh, like Jeremy takes whole team and you know, there's a bunch of people he's hired a bunch of MVPs that are now part of the, the, the graph API team. Right. And, it, and so most of, and they write, they do a ton of stuff and tons of community stuff. So they're very prolific there, but they don't have like a business mouthpiece. Oh, okay. And so I, I would yeah. even, I would say there's an opportunity there for yeah. anybody listening, but Leslie okay. for yourself to Right, no, to that's really that. interesting. I will, um, I've heard of Jeremy's name, so I will go and look him up on LinkedIn and uh, see if I'm not, I'm thinking we're probably already connected, but yeah, I think it's a, it's an opportunity because that's really important because we all had, I think we were all aware of Delve um, a while back mm -hmm. and then there was the profiles that we had, but that's all been tidied up now and it's bringing it all back, you know, reimagined and even better than it was before. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. Well, so what would, in, last question here. So what advice would you give to somebody who's interested in becoming an MVP? Like, how can they go stand out? Like what do you, do you, are you mentoring anybody? Are you guiding anybody today on that, that path? Yeah, so um, I'm actually with a bunk, bunch of bunk with a bunch of M MVPs around Viva called the Viva Explorers. Um, we are uh, we're all different. Uh, all MVPs. We're from now. There's just over thirty of us, and I uh, think we should invite you on board, um, Christian. So <laughs> I I've just I I been I haven't received anything in the mail, so I've been waiting. Right, it's but, yeah. it's coming. <laughs> we, I thought we'd have this chat first, but yeah. um, but I think that would be a really I'd love nice to. thing. To yeah, so um, yeah, we've got Australia, we've got India, um, South Africa, yeah, about nine of us in the UK, a whole bunch of you in the US, um, Canada. So um, yeah, I'm really pleased that I think we've covered near enough every continent. We need more in um, uh, in the, in uh, Asia Pacific. We really need some more in uh, some more. I may exploring. have some suggestions for you. Yeah, okay. So, um, but yeah, we're bringing people along all the time that are talking about Viva. So this is not just the, 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 the enthusiasts behind the Viva suite and this kind of exploring and discovering phase that we're going through this journey that we're on. We don't want to keep it just for MVPs. It is about us getting into the community and working with the customers and partners and cross pollinating um, um, the idea of this. This is about creating a, a better employee experience. That's the movement that we're trying to create. Um, so so we have friends of Viva Explorers that are in the partner network. Um, so, um, but the thing is, we have to, you know, we operate under NDA. So the Viva Explorers is just MVPs. So we can freely mm -hmm. um, talk about things that we're hearing. But we have this new um, kind of um, uh, uh, add-on uh, of that we we can see who is on social media, who is blogging and podcasts and um, around Viva and have really got it. So we are calling them the friends of Viva Explorers, but equally that could be a route into becoming an MVP. Um, so we are going to be, we're, we've got events coming up. We've got one in, uh, in Manchester 
at Microsoft um, offices in um, Manchester on the 12th of November. We're just organising that now. We haven't actually um, put, um, published that event yet, but it's we hope to publish it within the next, definitely within the next two weeks. Um, and we've got some of the friends of the explorers coming along to present at that session. So, um, so, so that's a, from the, from the point of view of the group, the community that I'm in with the Viva Explorers. Um, that's a route to becoming an MVP from the angle um, from the Viva angle. Um, so, um, yeah, if you if you contact any of us that you might know, um, you know, get your blogs out there um and then i because i'm i'm monitoring it all the time for anything yeah. to do with viva and i'm like oh there's another one popped up so <laughs> well so, yeah, I, so I always, that, that's the angle i'm coming from to help to help newbies come on board so, so I, I guess my my really my last question probably helps people in contacting you is like what are the best ways to reach you leslie you've got linkedin that's out there but uh do you have like a blog do you, you want to point people to yeah, I've got a blog. Um, it's called the Viva Visionary, and I'm on there as um I've re reimagined myself with an empowering makeover that you won't recognise <laughs> with my binoculars. So it's called. If you look for the Viva Visionary. I've written about I don't know about 28 blogs since last November around Viva and Teams. Um, but the easiest way to find me is probably on LinkedIn. Excellent. Well, Leslie, really appreciate the, the the time today and and great conversation around this. We we need to go into it's not enough time to go no, through. No, I know about, it's just like yeah, it's a it, lot, I, isn't there? Think, An awful lot going on. Maybe we'll have to do a crossover talk on the collab talk podcast at, at length, which is more like an hour long or or more. Uh, where we can dig in and talk about some of the history of the, the ESN capabilities and the importance yeah. of those that functionality uh within the enterprise but yeah. leslie really thank you for your time enjoy the rest of your your weekend and uh we'll connect with you soon bye bye yammy <laughs> thank you so much thanks very much and i'll be in touch about joining us on the viva explorer journey Excellent. thank you Christian.